Hey everyone, time for another math lesson. Um, and this is gonna be a big one. Um, normally we spend two full class days on this. Um, so we're just gonna try our best. Um, it's a really good one for drawing pictures. Uh, so I hope that you can go grab a um, piece of paper or grab your spiral, um, something to write with, uh, because this is a doozy. All right, so in the slideshow that we have, you're going to get some problems. Um, but first, I'm going to get you ready for those problems. <coughs> so in the slideshow, you should have a, a page that looks like this with Egbert's eggs. Now this problem, um, before we actually get started, I just want you to try it out, show and explain your thinking. You can pause the video now and just like read through it and see if you can draw out um, how you would try to solve this problem. So, so, so pause the video now. All right, welcome back. So the problem as you read says, Elbert's Egg Emporium sells eggs in cartons of one half dozen. Every morning, Elbert collects eggs that his hens lay and, and packs them into cartons. He packs as many full cartons as he can. If he has any left over, he eats those for breakfast. One morning, Elbert collected 151 eggs. <coughs> How many cartons did he need for the eggs? Show your work. Be sure to include units in your answer. And then, how many eggs did Elbert eat for breakfast? Show or explain how you know. All right, so there are many ways to solve this problem. And this is when actually being in school with other students around can be super helpful. Um, but again, we'll do the best we can. Starting with what we know. Okay, so we know that Albert collects eggs um, in a half dozen. The picture helps us to remember that a half dozen means six eggs. <coughs> and then we know, <coughs> excuse me, that he packs the cartons as full as he can. If he has any left over, he eats those eggs for breakfast. Okay, so we also know that he collected 151 eggs. So that's what we know. What we're trying to find out is how many cartons he needed for those 151 eggs. So again, we're thinking about division. This is a division problem. We're gonna think about it like an array or like an area problem. So if he put all his eggs in this space here, I'm actually going to make it a rectangle instead of a square. And that would mean that he should have 151 eggs in this. So it would be like egg, 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 lots of eggs. But we need to now start to divide this 151 into groups of six. So if we were thinking about this, like length times width, then I'm going to change this around a little bit. Okay, that was backwards. Um, if we think about this like 151 eggs, that is the area. So that means the length of it, we know it's going to have to be six times something to get this number of cartons. So the reason we've been doing all these equations is because we know that if you like multiplication, length, let's see, this is why I don't like uh, printing, length times width equals the area. So our length we know is six. Our width we don't know, but it's the number of cartons. And that's going to give us 151. Another way you can think about that is 151 divided by 6. OK. So it didn't ask us to do that, but I think that can be pretty helpful to do just to make sure that we know what we're actually trying to solve. <coughs> All right. So how are we going to take this 151 and figure out six times something is 151. That's a big number. Well, what I would do 
is again, I want to try to find some friendly numbers. And I'm going to try to find part of this rectangle first. So this six is going to be the same because that's going to be how many groups of six can we have. I need to find this area as 151, but I can't go over it. 150, I don't know what six times what is 151, but if I do a basic fact, I know six times two is 12. So six times two times 10 should give us here, why did I put this here? If I do six times two, that would give me 12. 12 eggs in here. <coughs> if I think about this like an extended fact, 20, now instead of being 12, now this is gonna be 120. So I have 120 out of 151 eggs, that's not bad. So how many would I have left? Okay, so now I need to think just kind of off to the side, Let me put this in white. So I had 151, that's not the color I wanted. If I had 151, now I need to take away 120. If I set this up, I would solve this as 71. Nope, that's wrong, super wrong. 31, good for me. All right, so I have 31 more eggs. So now, what am I gonna do with those 31 eggs? Can I put 31 eggs into groups of six? I think I can, okay? So how could I do that? Um, let me see, I could count by sixes, six, 12, 34, 16, 17, 18, 19, this is taking me a while. Um, what if I, I did my tens here, what if I did fives? Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Oh, okay. So if I did five cartons of six, that would give me 30 eggs. But I didn't just have 30 eggs, I had 31 eggs. So now I need to just take that and I'll make it a teeny tiny one. Oops, wrong way. So again, thinking about this like area, six times something is 151. I did six times 20 to get 120, six times five to get 30, and then I have one little extra. 120 plus 130 is gonna be 150 plus one. So now how many cartons does he need then? Well, we had 20 cartons here, and five cartons here, so he would need 25 cartons. Now you can see how well I write with a mouse. Well, that's not bad today. 25 cartons. So that's how I solve number one. You can solve it totally different. I'm not gonna get into that now. It takes a lot of time. <clears throat> but if you got 25 cartons, then you're correct. How many eggs did Elbert eat for breakfast? How am I supposed to know what he ate for breakfast? If he has any left over, he eats those eggs for breakfast. <coughs> did he have any eggs left over? Yes, he had one egg left over. So he gets to include or eat one egg. Okay. So this was a bigger number. We had a bigger number of eggs that we had to try to divide. So that's why we've been doing these extended facts, so we can try to get closer to that number. Now we have something called a remainder. We'll talk about remainders a little bit later. This is just a way for you to get in touch with those remainders and figure them out. All right, so that's just your warm up um, <coughs> question. For your work today, you're not going to be working with eggs, but you're going to be working with oranges. So I want to read this with you first. We can highlight it together. Um, 
and then I'm going to set you off to try to show or explain your work. Again, if you want to show your work on a piece of paper and then explain it in words, typing it out here, that's fine. If you want to take a picture and add that as an attachment to your um, math slideshow, you can do that. Um, if you want to take a picture and have uh, either your from your student account, you can email me or have someone from home email me. Any way you can show your work, that's great. Okay. So this problem says the fourth grade chess team is planning a fundraiser. They are going to sell fruit baskets. Oscar is in charge of oranges for the baskets. Three students brought oranges. Olivia brought 29 oranges. Ozzy brought 31 oranges. And Olga brought 27 oranges. Each basket must have at least five oranges. Some baskets may have six oranges, if there are any extras after each basket has five oranges. How many baskets will they need for the oranges? All right, hold up, wait a minute. All right, what do we know? All right, we know everyone's name starts with an O, which is a huge coincidence, isn't it? Um, we know that Olivia brought 29 oranges. We know that Ozzy brought 31. We know Olga brought 27. Already I'm like putting these together in my mind. But before you do that, we need to think, is there anything else we know? <clears throat> we also know that each basket must have at least five oranges. And now I want to like highlight this in a different color because this one's super important. Some baskets may have six oranges, emphasis on the may if there are any extras after each basket has five oranges. So that means that if I had 11 oranges, if I had 11 oranges, those oranges could be put into one basket of five and one basket of six. Hello. I have to fill up the baskets full of five first before I can do the basket of six. For another example of this, what this means is if I had 21 oranges, okay, I can have five, 10, 15, I have three baskets of five, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, and one basket of six. So I had to fill my baskets of five first before I fill my baskets of six. But they have more than 21 oranges. <coughs> so when you're solving this problem, first, whoops, first make sure you are solving what is actually asking you based on what we know. So for your work today, I'm asking that you try to finish problem number one, A and B, then on the back, problem number two, and problem number three. So that's it for this video. Um, again, this is really challenging. I get it, I know it is. Um, I just want you to try your best, show me what you're thinking so that I can do my best to help you learn um, and be ready for fifth grade. You're doing a great job. I'm here to help you. Ms. Froth is here to help you. Ms. Davies is here to help you. Your family is here to help you. Um, just reach out and let me know. All right, good luck.